Hey all you beautiful people, my name is Romance Freak and welcome back to Let's Read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now as you can see I am finally back to doing my regular recordings on my comfy couch here and um, and not on the cra the <laughs> crappy webcam, I apologize again for that. But uh, yeah, I finally got some good batteries that will like actually last and that kind of thing. It was just, yeah, a whole mess but you know guys don't need to see it anyway, hear about it. But anyway, so where we last left off... We have just been sorted into Harry. Well, Harry has just been sorted into Gryffindor, and now he's gonna be starting his first day of school. So just uh, sit back, relax, and curl up, and I hope I can keep you company for today. Chapter eight: The Potions Master. There, look. Where? Next to the tall kid with the red hair, wearing the glasses. Did you see his face? Did you see his scar? Whispers followed Harry from the moment he left his dormitory the next day. People lining up outside the classrooms stood on tiptoes to get a good look at him, or doubled back to pass him in the corridors again, staring. Harry wished they wouldn't, because he was trying to concentrate on finding his way to classes. There were a hundred and forty-two staircases at Hogwarts. Wow. <laughs> Wide, sweeping ones, narrow, rickety ones, some that led... Some were different on a Friday, some with a vanishing step halfway up that you had to remember to jump. There were doors that wouldn't open unless you asked politely or tickled them in exactly the right place, and doors that weren't really doors at all, but solid walls just pretending. It was also very hard to remember where anything was because it all seemed to move around a lot. People in the portraits kept going to visit each other, and Harry was sure the coats of armor could walk. The ghost didn't help either. It was always a nasty shock when one of them glided suddenly through a door when you were trying to open. Nearly Headless Snake was always happy to point at new Gryffindors in the right direction, but Peeves the Poltergeist was worth two locked doors and a trick staircase if you met him when you were late for class. He would drop a waste paper basket on your head, pull rugs from under your feet, pelt you with bits of chalk, or sneak up behind you, invisible, grab your nose, and screech, GOT YOUR CONK! <laughs> Even worse than Peeves, if that was possible, was that caretaker Argus Filch. Harry and Ron managed to get on the wrong side of him on their very first morning. Filch found them trying to force their way through a door that unluckily turned out to be an entrance of the out-of-bounds quarter on the third floor. He wouldn't believe they were lost, was sure they were trying to break in on purpose, and was threatening to lock them in the dungeons when they were rescued by Professor Quirrell, who was passing. Filch owned a cat called Mrs. Norris, a scrawny, dust-colored creature with bulging, lamp-like eyes just like Filch's. She patrolled the corridors alone. Break a rule in front of her, put just one toe out of line, and she'd whisk off her filch, who would appear wheezing two seconds later. Filch knew the secret passageways of the school better than anyone, except perhaps the Weasley twins, and could pop up as suddenly as any of the ghosts. The students all hated him, and it was the dearest ambition of many to give Mrs. Norris a good kick. And then, once you had managed to find them, they were the classes themselves. And there was a lot to magic, as Harry quickly found out, then waving then waving her wand and saying a few funny words. They had studied the night sky through telescopes every Wednesday at midnight and learned the names of different stars and the movements of planets. Three times a week they went out to the greenhouses behind the castle to study herbology, with a dumpy little witch called Professor Sprout, where they learned how to take care of all the strange plants and fungi and found out what they were used for. Easily the most boring class was History of Magic, which was the only one taught by a ghost. Professor Benz had been a very old indeed when he had fallen asleep in front of the staff room fire and got up next morning to teach, leaving his body behind him. Benz droned on and on while they scribbled down names and dates and got Emmerich and the Evil and Yurik the Oddball mixed up. Professor Flitwick, the charms teacher, was a tiny little wizard who had to stand on a pile of books to see over his desk. At the start of their first class, he took a, the roll call, and when he reached Harry's name, he gave an excited squeak and toppled out of sight. Professor McGonagall was again different. Harry had been quite right to think that she wasn't a teacher to cross. Strict and clever, she gave them a talking to the moment they sat down in her first class. Transfiguration is some of the most complex and dangerous magic you will learn at Hogwarts, she said. Anyone messing around in my class will leave and not come back. You have been warned. Then she changed her desk into a pig and back again. They were all very impressed and couldn't wait to get started, but soon realized that they weren't going to be changing furniture and animals for a long time. After taking a lot of complicated notes, they were each given a match and started trying to turn it into a needle. 
By the end of the lesson, only Hermione Granger had made any difference to her match. Professor McGonagall showed the class how it had gone all silver and pointy and gave Hermione a rare smile. The class everyone had really been looking forward to was Defense Against the Dark Arts, but Quirrell's lessons turned out to be a bit of a joke. His classroom smelled strongly of garlic, which everyone said was to ward off a vampire he met in Romania, and was afraid would be coming back to get him one of these days. His turban, he had told them, had given him by an African prince as a thank you for getting rid of a troublesome zombie, but they weren't sure they believed his story. For one thing, when Seamus Finnegan asked eagerly to hear how Quirrell fought off the zombie, Quirrell went pink and started talking about the weather. For another, they had noticed that a funny smell hung around the turban, and the Weasley twins insisted that it was stuffed full of garlic as well, so that Quirrell was protected everywhere he went. Harry was very relieved to find out that he wasn't miles behind everyone else. Lots of people had come from muggle families and, like him, hadn't had any idea that they were witches and wizards. There was so much to learn that even people like Ron didn't have much of a head start. Friday was an important day for Harry and Ron. They finally managed to find their way down to the Great Hall for breakfast without getting lost once. What have we got today? Harry asked Ron as he poured sugar over his porridge. Double potions of Slytherin, said Ron. Snipes head of the head Slytherin house. They say he's always favors them. We'll be able to see if that's true. Wish McGonagall to favor us, said Harry. Professor McGonagall was head of the Gryffindor house, but it hadn't stopped her from giving them a huge pile of homework the day before. Just then the mail arrived. As Harry had gotten used to this by now, but had given quite a shock on the first morning, when about a hundred owls had suddenly streamed into the great hall during breakfast, circling the tables until they saw their own owners and dropped letters and packages onto their laps. Hedwig hadn't brought Harry anything so far. She sometimes flew in to nibble his ear and have a bit of toast before going off to sleep in the hourly with the other school owls. This morning, however, she fluttered down between the marmalade and the sugar bowl and dropped a note on Harry's plate. Harry tore it open at once. It said in a very untidy scrawl, Dear Harry, I know you get Friday afternoons off, so would you be, would you like to come and have a cup of tea with me around three? I want to hear all about your first week. Send us an answer back with Hedwig. Hybrid. Harry borrowed Ron's quill, scribbled, Yes, please, see you later, on the back of the note, and said Hedwig off again. <clears throat> I apologize. Water's always good for the soul. It was lucky that Harry had tea with Hagrid to look forward to because potions lesson turned out to be the worst thing that had happened to him so far. At the start of term banquet, Harry had gotten the idea that Professor Snape disliked him. By the end of the first potions lesson, he knew he'd been wrong. Snape just didn't dislike Harry. He hated him. Potions lessons took place down in one of the dungeons. It was colder here than up in the main castle and would have been quite creepy enough without the pickled animals floating in glass jars all around the walls. Snape, like Flickwick, started a class by taking roll call, and like Flickwick, he paused at Harry's name. Ah, uh, yes, he said softly. Harry Potter, our new celebrity. Draco Malfoy and his friends Crabbe and Goyle sniggered behind their hands. Snape finished calling the names and looked up at his class. His eyes were black like Hagrid's, but they had none of Hagrid's warmth. They were cold and empty and made you think of dark tunnels. You are here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making, he began. He spoke barely more than a whisper, but they caught every word. Like Professor McGonagall, Snape had the gift of keeping class silent without effort. As there is little foolish one waving round here, many of you will hardly believe this magic. As such, I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of the softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes. The delicate powder of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind and ensnaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even put a stopper in death. If you aren't as big as a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. More silence followed this little speech. Harry and Ron exchanged looks of with raised eyebrows. Hermione Granger was on the edge of her seat, looking desperate to start proving that she wasn't a dunderhead. Potter, said Snape suddenly. What would I get if I added a powdered root of an asphodel to infusion of wormwood? Powdered root of a what to infusion of what? Harry glanced at Ron, who looked as stumped as he was. Hermione's hand was shot in the air. I don't know, sir, said Harry. Snape's lips curled into a snare. Tut, tut. Fame clearly isn't everything. 
He ignored Hermione's hand. Let's try again. Potter, where would you look if I told you to find me a bazaar? Hermione stretched her hand as high as in the air as it could go with, without her leaving her seat. But Harry didn't have the faintest idea what a bazaar was. He tried to look at Malfoy, Crabbe, and Goyle, who were shaking with laughter. I don't know, sir. Thought you wouldn't open a book before coming, eh, Potter? Harry forced himself to keep being, looking straight into those cold eyes. He had looked through the books at Dursley's, but did Snape expect him to remember everything in 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi? Snape was still ignoring Hermione's quivering hand. What is the difference, Potter, between Monkshood and Wolfsbane? At this, Hermione stood up, her hand stretching toward this dungeon ceiling. I don't know, said Harry quietly. I think Hermione does, though. Why don't you try her? A few people laughed. Harry caught Seamus' eye, and Seamus winked. Snape, however, was not pleased. Sit down, he snapped at Hermione. For your information, Potter, Asphodel and Wormwood make a sleeping potion so powerful it is known as the Draught of Living Death. A bizarre is a stone taken from the stomach of a goat and will save you from most poisons. As for Monkshood and Wolfsbane, they are the same plant, which also goes by the name of Alconite. Well, why aren't you all writing that down? And there was a sudden rummaging of quills and parchment. Over the noise, Snape said, and a point will be taken from Gryffindor House for your cheek, Potter. Things didn't prove for the Gryffindors as the potions lesson continued. Snape put all of them into pairs and set them to mixing up a simple potion to cure boils. He swept around his long black cloak, watching them weigh dried nettles and crushed snake fangs, criticizing almost everyone except Malfoy, who he seemed to like. He was just telling how everyone to look at the perfect way Malfoy had stewed his horned slugs when clouds of acid green smoke and a loud hissing filled the dungeon. Neville had somehow managed to melt Seamus's cauldron into a twisted blob, and their potion was sleeping across the stone floor, burning holes in people's shoes. Within seconds, the whole class was standing on their stools while Neville, who had been drenched with the potion while the cauldron collapsed, moaned in pain as angry red boils sprang up all over his arms and legs. Idiot boy! Snape snarled, clearing the spilled potion away with one wave of his wand. I suppose you added the porcupine quills before taking the cauldron off the fire? Neville whimpered as boils started popping up all over his nose. Take him to the hospital wing, Snape spat as Seamus. Then he ran on Harry and Ron, who had been working next to Neville. You, Potter, why didn't you tell him not to add the quills? Thought he'd make it look good if he got it wrong, did you? That is another point you've lost for Gryffindor. This was so unfair that Harry opened his mouth to argue, but Ron kicked him behind the cauldron. Don't push it, he muttered. I've heard Snape come to him very nasty. As they climbed the steps out of the dungeon an hour later, Harry's mind was racing and spirits were low. He lost two points for Gryffindor in his very first week. Why did Snape hate him so much? Cheer up, said Ron. Um, Snape's always got points off Fred and George. Can I come be Hagrid with you? Uh, for uh, <clears throat> excuse me. At five to three, they left the castle and made their way across the grounds. Hagrid lived in a small wooden house on the edge of the Forbidden Forest. A crossbow and a pair of galoshes were outside the front door. When Harry knocked, they heard a frantic scrambling from inside and several booming barks. Then Hagrid's voice rang out, saying, Back, fine, back! <clears throat> Hagrid's big, hairy face appeared at the crack as he pulled the door open. Hang on, he said. Back, fine! He let them in, struggling to keep a hold of the collar of an enormous black boar hound. Those dogs are huge. Um, there was only one room inside. Hams and pheasants were hanging from the ceiling, and copper kettle was boiling on an open fire, and in the corner stood a massive bed with patchwork quilt over it. Mike yourselves at home, said Hagrid, letting go of Fang, who bounded straight at Ron and started licking his ears. Like Hagrid, Fang clearly was not as fierce as he looked. This is Ron, Harry told Hagrid, who was pouring boiling water into a large teapot and putting, putting rock cakes onto a plate. Another Weasley, eh? said Hagrid, look, glancing at Ron's freckles. I spent half my life chasing your twin brother's way from the forest. The rock cakes were shapeless lumps with raisins that almost broke their teeth, but Harry and Ron pretended to be enjoying them as they told Hagrid all about the first lessons. Fang rested his head on Harry's knee and drooled all over his robes. Harry and Ron were delighted to hear Hagrid called Filch that old git. As for that cop, Mrs. Norris, I'd like to introduce her to Fang sometime. Do you know, every time I go up to school, she followed me everywhere. Can't get rid of her. Filch puts her up to it. 
Harry told Hagrid about Snape's lesson. Hagrid, like Ron, told Harry not to worry about it, that Snape likely liked hardly any of the students. But he seemed to really hate me. Rubbish, said Hagrid. Why should I? Yet Harry couldn't help thinking that Hagrid didn't quite meet his eyes when he said that. How's your brother, Charlie? Hagrid asked Ron. I liked him a lot. Great with animals. Harry wondered if Hagrid would change the subject on purpose. While Ron told Hagrid all about Charlie's work with dragons, Harry picked up a piece of paper that was lying on the table under the tea cozy. It was a cutting from the Daily Prophet. Gringotts break in latest. Investigations continue into the break in at Gringotts on 31st of July. Widely believed to be the work of dark wizards or witches unknown. The Gringotts goblin state insisted that nothing had been taken. The vault had, that was searched had in fact been emptied that same day. But we're not telling you what was in there, so you'll keep your noses out if you know what's good for you. I said a Gringotts spokesgoblin this afternoon. Harry remembered that Ron telling him on the train that someone had tried to rob Gringotts, but Ron hadn't mentioned the date. Hagrid, said Harry, that Gringotts break-in happened on my birthday. They might have happened while we were there. There was no doubt about it. Hagrid definitely didn't meet Harry's eyes this time. He grunted and offered him a another rock cake. Harry read the story again. The vault was, that was searched had, in fact, been emptied earlier that same day. Hagrid had emptied Vault 713, if you could call it emptying, taking out that grubby little package. Had that been what the thieves were looking for? As Harry and Ron walked back to the castle for dinner, their pockets weighed down with raw cakes had been too polite to refuse, and Harry thought that none of the lessons that he had so far had given him much to think about as that tea with Hagrid. Had Hagrid collected the package just in time? Where was it now? And did Hagrid know something about Snape that he didn't want to tell Harry? Oh, believe me, Harry, more than you know. Um, well, guys, so that will be the end for... <laughs> there goes the book. That'll be the end for Chapter 8. So we'll be continuing um, for for next week. So um, this week's question for, um, for you guys to answer is... What was your first day of school like, or what's your fondest memory of Alan Rickman? Was was Harry Potter the first that you were introduced to, or was it another movie that you were introduced to when you first? Did? Let me know in the comment section below, because like, um, you know, I I was really heartbroken when I heard that Alan Rickman had passed away, but you know, like, the same day though, I ended up like actually celebrating his life as I was reading a bunch of um, uh, reading a lot about him and watching clips from other movies and stuff like that. So he's indeed a legend. So. Anyways, uh, yeah, let, let me know. You either you can answer either comment. So, I, I mean, um, you can answer either question of what was your first day of school like, and tell me all about it, and what was it, and was it memorable, that kind of thing, or tell me about a fond memory, how you got introduced to, and like why you like Alan Rickman as an actor. So, um, well, I'll s and so I will be reading those comments in a future video in. in next week. So, peace out. Love y'all. See you next time in my den. Oh!